Hi, I'm Ricardo Gras. Um, welcome to the Metaverse Diaries series. Today, uh, I'm delighted uh, to be able to introduce you to someone who has been experimenting with our platform for a while. So he's an educator at St. Paulton in Austria. Victor Schettinger, he's a lecturer and researcher on creative computing. Many thanks for joining today. Thank you for having me. So Victor, first question for you. And how are you using virtual worlds? Well, at the moment, um, we teach um, a lot of different disciplines that involve uh, graphics and game design. And at one point we reached the course where the students have to develop their own 3D game. So they have to start thinking about future wars. So we have to teach them how to build them. And at one point, by the end of the first semester, they have to make their whole VR project. So they have to design a virtual world and enter into it and, and know how th these things work. Nice. Um, if you are an educator and you are thinking about how best to make sure that your students are ready for uh, uh, such a fluid future, my what comes to, to mind is this is impossible challenge. How do you go about this? We try to do is we have a very f uh, um, fluid way of um, making new courses and changing the course structure and changing the whole program every few years. And we, we just have to be very uh, um, looking out what's going on and responding fast. How do we make sure that the students still are relevant years forward? And yeah, it's, it's just trying to keep up a fascinating challenge. Uh, certainly not impossible, but uh, mm -hmm, yeah. uh, hard, uh, hard. But obviously, I think your approach is, is really interesting. So congrats. Um, look, we, we're very excited to, to have you, as, as I said, uh, for many reasons. Um, I, I am, in, in particular, um, excited if you could tell more about how using Captix technology, what, how are you, in particular, using the scripting capabilities? I was really curious of using it as a, a sort of an a, a more lightweight engine in some sense that, that that is very easily deployable. This is to me the coolest thing about it. Um, and also another interest possibility uh, was that it can be used also as a, a testing environment because in a lot of types of research, uh, you need users to be in, uh, immersed in a certain environment where you can measure their behavior, you can measure some things. And this can also be very uh, a, a very good tool for this. You know, you can create an experiment within a world and then you send this to someone and then this person enters in, interact. And it's uh, a lot easier than bringing this person to your lab uh, and also allows other, other sorts of, in, of things that you can do with it. So it's it's a fascinating uh, stuff all all the way, and uh, I can't wait to to see you personally how you take it forward. Because as a, as I said, I'm a fan of uh, your work. We try to keep up with the thousands of worlds that are out there on our uh, platform, but it's it uh, your work stands out, and that's why we're here today. You also have these different hats, which I think are are very um, interesting to explore. But from that point of view, and especially looking into Gen AI. Mm -hmm. which we don't have so much time to discuss because it's never ending and uh, equally equally fascinating. What would be the best practices that you would recommend from what you've seen so far in your experiments, specifically to use it in connection with virtual worlds? Right now, I think uh, it's a time still to experiment, to try uh, a, a lot of things, you know, try models, try to plug things together. I still think that there's a, a, a best practice now is, is, is just put your hands on it and try to do things. Like uh, it's very hard today and for the past few months to know what's exactly the best out there, you know, in, in, in AI. It's very hard to follow the state of the art. Even if you're doing this your whole day, your whole job is to be updated. It's impossible because there's new models coming out every day, new videos, new everything. And even if you watch all the podcasts, you re read all the news, you cannot test everything. So no one really knows what's best now. And, and, and therefore, I think the best practice now is just experiment with, with uh, everything you can uh, and, and, and get really ready, get a feel of how these things work. Yeah. 
Thank you. Um, and thanks for joining us, Victor. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure always. So we look forward to continue collaborating and uh, best of luck with your course and your practice, with your research as well. Thank you for You're coming. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.